It's Friday, June 27th, and here's some of the stories we're following this morning on NBC News at Sunrise. The condition of Russia's wounded Mir space station remains serious but stable. The Senate is expected to follow the House's lead today in passing the biggest tax cut bill in 16 years. And the Supreme Court says terminally ill patients do not have a constitutional right to a doctor's help in committing suicide. That decision came on the same day that a Florida jury acquitted a doctor of murder charges. As NBC's Kerry Sanders reports, the doctor was accused of giving a dying cancer patient a lethal injection. Violation of that duty. Dr. Ernesto Pinzon admitted giving 70-year-old Rosario Guerreri a highly unusual dosage of morphine, Valium, and potassium chloride. But the doctor never said he wanted to kill his cancer-stricken patient. He simply wanted to ease the pain of his suffering. I was acting just with compassion, trying to help somebody that was dying. Not guilty. On Thursday, a Florida jury acquitted the doctor on first-degree murder charges. As the Supreme Court was ruling patients don't have a constitutional right to physician-assisted suicide, the jury in this case was saying the doctor did not commit a crime when his patient died. It just wasn't conceivable that they could come back with a guilty verdict. Roy Guerreri's family left the courthouse without comment. But when they spoke to NBC News last year, his wife said her husband never would have wanted to die like this. Potassium chloride is the same drug used for execution by lethal injection. His eyes were wide open. His mouth was wide open. And he wasn't supposed to die that way. Despite the acquittal in this case, Thursday's Supreme Court decision could make murder charges against doctors more common. Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Miami. In Hong Kong, the countdown continues to the Monday handover from British to Chinese control. In Beijing, the historic end of 156 years of British rule is being marked with a special opera and other ceremonies. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong, technicians are working around the clock now, getting 27 tons of fireworks ready for the handover celebrations. And while it seems all of the attention is being paid to Hong Kong, the story in China is really a tale of two cities. NBC's Tom Brokaw traveled to Shanghai, where he found American-style capitalism is alive and well. Shanghai, the racy old seaport, is communism's showcase of capitalism, with a population of 13 million and industrial strength smog. Shanghai wants to be the Manhattan on the Hongpu River. This, the birthplace of communism in China. Before that, it was the Pearl of the Orient, a crossroads of trade, intrigue, hedonism in an elegant setting. Some of the old Shanghai still can be seen, but it's giving way fast to the unofficial new Chinese slogan, to get rich is glorious. It's a paradise, a shopping paradise. This is not what Mao Zedong had in mind, but then he's long gone. This is almost $100. Uh, it's big money for me. She will like it. Li Yuanyi personifies Shanghai these days. He's going for the gold, even though he is a former Red Guard and still keeps a picture of Chairman Mao and says he believes in socialism. But he's a communist with a chain of supermarkets, and they're helping China into the modern world. There's a price for this, of course. Old neighborhoods are being leveled, people uprooted to make room for highways and bridges and subways. Two and a half million migrant workers are in the city and more arrive every day. The Shanghai crimes of old are back, gambling and prostitution. But everyone's having too much fun to notice. No one here wants to believe this party could end with a big crash. Tom Brokaw, NBC News. Just ahead, CNBC's Felicia Taylor on new roadblocks for the biggest corporate deal ever. Ben Joe Witte has your weekend forecast.